Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. You know, I received a uh, a comment from a guy named Wayne. And uh, I'm going to read you what he said in the comment. Because I thought it was pretty interesting. He says, good day Dr. Novak. I contacted you back in 2004-2005 when you were sending CDs to interested people. I actually incorporated your filtration system into our 100,000, I mean 10,000 imperial gallon koi pond with outstanding results, better water parameters and clarity than other members in his club with $100,000 pond setups. Ours was completely do it yourself. We have now been out of the koi uh, for some time, but uh, now would like to set up another discus tank and would like your input. We are planning on a four by two by two foot tank with a sump for the anoxic baskets. We want a natural planted tank. Would recommend a plenum as well. Any input uh, would be much appreciated. Regards, Wayne, long time believer. I think I remember Wayne. If uh, I remember that's what, 19, 20 years ago, um, there was an illness, I think, in the family. And uh, I think that's what happened with, with the pond because of an illness. If I remember correctly, if he's watching this, if, if I'm right, I mean, that's over 20 years ago. But, yeah, a long time ago, over 20 years ago, uh, I used to send out CDs of my book so people could read about the anoxy filtration system and I remember I used to send these books out absolutely free as Wayne can contest to he's in uh, Australia and uh, these were out of my pocket the CDs the, the printing the the postage everything was absolutely free just for the asking no matter where you were in the world, I would send you a free CD of my book to get the information out about the Noxie filtration system. If you think about it, how many other people would actually go through that much trouble unless they have a business and they're making some kind of money off of you to do something absolutely free out of the goodness of their heart? And that's what I did. I remember once uh, it was on a forum and that's why I stay off forums. People are very mean on forums. But, uh, made, oh, that's no big deal. You know, CDs don't cost that much. And and uh, and and uh, to mail something like that doesn't cost much. And uh, it did. But one person said, I'll tell you what. You write a book. You put it on a CD. You, and, you, and I'll be the first one you can go mail and start mailing it off your book absolutely free to people. He says, you know, because people have a big mouth and they turn around and, and say something cute like that, but they themselves do it? No, they don't do it. But they'll say that, oh, that's nothing. That, that, that's, you know, so what? And that's how people look at it. But uh, I do remember that back in those days uh, when I was sending out books for free and some people really appreciate it, and other people, like the comment I just told you, how they got sarcastic, like it's no big deal. It is a big deal. You're sending out hundreds and hundreds and thousands of, of CDs absolutely free to somebody, and that cost is coming out of my pocket, not your pocket. I didn't even charge anybody to, to uh, know about the anoxic filtration system. I also got another one here uh dr novak thanks for the review that was a review on the uh auto top off there was one thing i did forget and here's a problem i see where people say you know they only work for a short time and all of a sudden it didn't work right i forgot to tell you this if you have calcium in your water and you build up a calcium deposit like around your tank like i do it also builds up in that sensor that goes in there, okay, and or that reflects from the sensor through the glass. So what you have to do is you just pull it off, go get yourself some vinegar, 
you know, not apple cider vinegar, but normal vinegar, and place it in there. And, you know, place it in there for an hour or two. It, it doesn't matter because it's not going to need to fill up your aquarium with an hour or two to eat away that calcium buildup that's in there. That's another thing I found was a fault of it. Like I said in the review, you got to do some maintenance to keep that reflector going and make sure the glass is clean. Because I know in my aquariums, even my aquariums when I was up north, would build up a calcium buildup around the tubes, around the top of the glass, uh, from bubblers, you'll see it. Well, it builds up in that uh, reflector that you have that's inside the aquarium. That's got to keep clean because a lot of people, people on some of the reviews I saw complain that, hey, uh, I had this auto top off, this uh, Hager, Hager or Hager at, uh, I don't know exactly how the, the name is exactly say, Hager or Hager. I think it's supposed to be a uh Dutch name. But anyway, um, and they complained that, oh, it worked fine for four months. And then all of a sudden I was cleaning it and cleaning it and, and it wouldn't work. Well, if you have a calcium buildup, uh, of course it's not going to work because just cleaning it with a brush or running in water is not going to do it because that calcium line is going to be exactly where the fill line would be, right? So you have to put it in something that could uh, uh, eat away the calcium. They do have stuff you can buy at the hardware store to eat away calcium along with vinegar. But uh, you can try it with vinegar first because if there's any residue vinegar, it's not going to harm the fish really. You know, a little bit of vinegar is not going to harm the fish if there was residue or even if there's a little residue of bleach, it wouldn't harm. But uh, there is a product you can buy at the hardware store. It's in a green bottle. I think it's LCR or something like that. That will also get rid of calcium. But that's what I noticed. Once that calcium builds up, you got to get that calcium off. And the probe then will be, uh, or the, the little insert that goes in your aquarium will be nice and clean and read just like it did when it was brand new. Little tricks you have to know on cleaning those. But, but they do work, you know, as long as you have that understanding, there is some maintenance. Okay, let's see. Uh, thanks for the review. Or, originally, when I set up my 90 gallon, I had a full sump with a filter sock sitting in an old Marineland Magnum canister. Um, like filter sock I'm using on the Nano Aquarium that's behind me. Um, let's see. Uh, per one of your original videos way back. Yeah, that would, I had a um, Eheim canister and I had like a sock in it or something like that to help keep the filtration going. Boy, that was years ago. That was seven, eight years ago, nine years ago. Yeah, that's quite some time ago when I did that video. Let's see, it worked fantastic. I was uh, rinsing the filter sock every week with my planted aquarium. However, I ended up switching to just a canister filter because my neons and other small fish would keep getting sucked into the wear. Yeah, that's the problem with my 90 gallon wear. Uh, I clean out the canister filter and I'm finding, I have found small fish and I found um, shrimp. They get sucked up into the wear and they get sucked up into the canister filter. One time, I think I found like 17 shrimp. I think I did a video on it. Yeah, that's the trouble with wares. They, uh, they seem to suck in anything smaller than that slit. They uh, definitely, I was surprised to even see a fish in there. Let's see. Every week I was uh, fishing them out of the wear. Too much trouble for me. As I told you before, the system was running completely algae-free with the plenum and um, Oase a Biomaster 350 filter. The most maintenance-free tank I have ever had. 
All I do is water changes and clean the inside front glass weekly. And of course, live plant pruning. Thanks. Okay. That was uh, by Jim. That was one of the comments made just recently. Just recently he, he made that comment. But anyhow, um, I wanted to read that because these comments are a couple of the people who have been listening to me for years and been using the anoxic filter or using a plenum or what have you that I have talked about for years now, writing, which is, which is good to hear from people who are uh, long-term. What can I say? Wayne is very long-term from 2004. And Jim, of course, he just wrote me about his 90 gallon. And of course, if he did listen to me back then, I think that was, I think that was like 2014, 15 when I had the aquarium where I put a sock inside of a, a 2215 canister filter. I think it was a 2215 canister filter in the sump. And um, you know where the inlet is? You know, it's got that U shape and it just screws in. I unscrewed it and let the water come out the bottom hole. And the, the canister just basically held the big sock in it which is kind of neat. So when the water flowed into it, it would go into the canister and that hole would allow it to exit out of it. But because in the sump that I had, that was a, a SCA aquarium, um, it didn't have a sock holder of any sort. It was just, you know, different, what can you say? Uh, how many did it have? I think it had three, three different stations that uh, were in the sump. And of course, the last one was your pump heaters and stuff like that. And when I did a video on that, but that's, uh, that was done quite some time ago. So I thought I would read you this. He wants to uh, use a plenum as well for the plants. Basically, it's just going to be um, like I have for my 90. It's going on four years old now. Uh, plants are doing fine. I do have to do maintenance as far as trimming the plants. That is another aquarium, as I said in my last video, that does have an auto top off because it just the, evaporates so much being an open top. I'm sure if I had a glass top to it, which I, I probably should get one, but I have plants kind of growing out of the tank. So I guess it's a yin and a yang. Do you, do you want the top open so plants can grow and, and flower? Or do you want to uh, enclose it in glass to cut down on the evaporation? That's entirely up to each hobby. But I thought I would read that because I found it to be interesting that people who listened to me quite some time ago, decades ago, uh, are still kind of following me and watching my videos from other countries. So I just thought I'd do a short video about that because uh, the anoxic filtration system, it's been around for a long time. Like I said, about 35, almost 40 years when I came up with it and it went out to the public where finally people could learn about it and find out more about it. And you have to remember back, and which a lot of people don't understand, 35 years ago, things were different in ponds and stuff than they are today. You know, we didn't have all the equipment 35, 40 years ago for ponds that we have today. And some of the equipment for ponds is very, very expensive. At least me, I was always the kind of person who, who liked doing things, but liked doing them by trying to save money just like everybody. You're trying to save money and you're trying to be successful without spending an arm and a leg on lighting systems and everything else. And I mean, this is one of those hobbies that have evolved for me and for a lot of other people. But <clears throat> especially today, I'm so glad that it has evolved. It's evolved to the point where 
You no longer have to buy these expensive strip lights and stuff. You could make your own lights. I mean, it has evolved that much where, like for a freshwater aquarium, there's no reason to go out and spend $175 on a strip right strip light or $200 or $250 on a light that uh, that you're going to need higher output on when now since we know we have the ultra bright GE bulbs that could be used they seem to do great for growing the plants uh, not promoting algae they seem to be you know uh, unbeatable for all the lights I have tried. And believe me, I've, I've tried a lot of strip lights and stuff and spent good money just like the rest of you have and found that uh, they promoted algae and it, I had problems with them and I didn't really care for them as far as how they made the tank look. Either they were too blue or, or, or made a greenish cast to the tank like the like uh, the Kessel light did, you know, you you try to adjust it and it had a greenish yellowish cast to it. I didn't, I didn't like that way it looked. So it's it's nice to see how the hobby has evolved in those years. It's it's sad to see that uh, that some of the people still resist wanting to know something different. But uh, there's nothing you can do about that. All I can do on my channel is try to help people out and try to educate them. And that's that's as much as I can do. I can't do any more than that, whether they listen or not. But here's two people here who are long-term, long-term, especially Wayne, very long-term, two decades. Uh, and Jim, over a decade of listening to me and following my directions and still Look at that. Uh, works fantastic. Uh, the tank is doing great. No algae problems. Talks about his weekly water changes. You know, that was another thing, too, is uh, uh, some people approve of weekly water changes. Some people don't. It just depends on the individual. But anyhow, I just basically want to do the whole video on these two people. I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's more. But uh, these two people contacted me and let me know that they're long-term followers and have very happy long-term with using my system or my ideas. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.